Croissant is the French word for crescent. This flaky, curved roll is generally associated with France, even though many food historians believe its origins are Austrian. Regardless of where it came from, the croissant is a popular breakfast pastry in many parts of the world. Plain, with jam, or dipped in a cup of coffee, there's nothing like the light, flaky texture and buttery flavor of a croissant. This commercial bakery makes its croissant with soft spread margarine in lieu of butter. The other ingredients are yeast, very cold water, because warm water would trigger the yeast to react prematurely, sugar, a touch of salt, and white all-purpose flour. All the ingredients go into an industrial mixer for 10 minutes. First at slow speed to blend everything and form the dough, then faster to knead it. Next, the sticky elastic dough enters the multi-roller machine. As an automated dispenser lightly dusts the dough with flour to prevent it from sticking to the equipment, a series of 16 rollers progressively flattens the dough into a thinner and thinner sheet. The next process, lamination, is what creates the croissant's flaky layers. The first station on this line extrudes 20 kilogram blocks of margarine into a half a centimeter thin sheet. The next station lays the margarine sheet on top of the thin dough sheet, then folds the ends of the dough upward, enveloping the margarine. Then rollers compress the overlapped dough ends to seal the margarine inside and flatten the whole thing down to about a centimeter thick. The next station repeatedly folds the dough over itself, then, with rollers again, presses the layers into a thin sheet. This laminating cycle repeats over and over again until each dough block coming off the line comprises 243 layers. Plastic wrap keeps the dough moist as it now undergoes eight hours of refrigeration. The cold re-hardens the by now softened margarine and lessens the dough's elasticity. The dough is now ready for the automated machine which forms the croissants. The first rollers progressively flatten the connected blocks into a thin sheet. Then another roller runs over the dough horizontally to expand the sheet to the required width. Next, cutters divide the sheet into seven thin bands, each one 10 centimeters wide. Then a roller surfaced in triangular blades cuts each band of dough into triangles. A robot separates the triangles and turns them all in the same direction, with the flat side forward. A stopper running the width of the conveyor belt aligns the triangles in straight rows for the next station, inside which a device rolls each triangle into the shape of the croissant. The bakery's two forming machines output 50,000 raw dough croissants per hour. Next stop, the proofer, a steam chamber inside which the heat and high humidity activate the yeast. The dough rises, and by the time the croissant exit an hour later, they've doubled in size. They now bake for 14 minutes in a tunnel oven at a temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. The moisture in the dough evaporates, the resulting steam, along with the melting margarine, producing air bubbles which separate the layers, creating that signature flakiness. The croissants are now fully baked, golden brown, and fragile. Soft rubber suction cups delicately transfer them to a conveyor belt. The belt leads to a spiral tower. By the time the croissants descend to the bottom, they've completely cooled. As they travel to packaging, a quality control inspector pulls any misshapen croissant. A multitasking robot slaps an adhesive label on plastic bags, counts out and drops in two dozen croissants, then securely seals the bags to lock in the freshness until the croissants reach your breakfast table. <laughs>